think this is like the mix. Good afternoon, everyone. You're listening to 90.5 KSHT Huntsville, Texas, and here I am Antonio Swain here with Evan Schumard, and we're here at Don Sanders Stadium where your Sam Houston Bearcats face off against the McNeese Cowboys. Sam Houston State sits at 15 wins and 8 losses, and they're 7-3 and three in the South uh, Southland Conference. And McNeese sits at 15 wins and 11 losses, and they they are three and four in the Southland Conference. And batting first for your Bearcats, well for your McNeese Cowboys is Peyton Harden. Second is going to be Shane Selman. Third is going to be Clayton Raspberry. Fourth is going to be Carson Maxwell. Fifth is going to be Jake Dickerson. Sixth is going to be Nate Fisbeck. Seventh is Brett Welton. Eighth is Jacob Strangner. And ninth is going to be Reed Borke. And your starting pitcher for them is going to be Jonathan Ellison. And for your Bearcats, your first batter is going to be Clayton Harp. Your second batter is Riley McKnight. Third, Colton Kowser. Fourth, Hunter Hearn. Fifth, Jack Rogers. Sixth is going to be Jordan Cannon. Seventh, Gavin Johnson. Eighth, Eric Bonhurt. Ninth is Jackson Lofton. And your starting pitcher for the Bearcats today is going to be Riley Gossett. Like Tony just got done saying, we got Riley Gossett pitching today, the right-hander. Senior with a 6.19 ERA on the season with a 2-1 record. Coming in 
on the first pitch right now, making his 12th appearance of the season. Gossett from the windup. Swing and a miss there for strike number one. That's a good way to come out, come out strong. Leading off for McNeese will be Peyton Harden, setting up on the left side of the plate. That one swung over there. Third baseman will make the hot read and get the first out of the inning. Coming up next for the Cowboys will be Shane Shellman. Right-hander wearing number four, playing center field today. He has a pretty good batting average. 320 on the season. Third highest on the team for McNeese State. Gossett's pitch will go down for strike number one, right down the middle of the plate. We'll wait the second pitch. A one pitch comes. Pop way back for a foul. Strike number two now. Almost had that one. Yeah, he, uh, he was really trying to swing for the fences on that one right there. Tried to knock that one out the park, seems like. Gossett awaiting his pitch. 0-2 pitch coming in. Swing and a miss for strike number three and out number two here in the top of the first for the Bearcats. 1-2 down already. Coming up third, number 34, the designated hitter, Clayton Raspberry. Gossett has came off to a good start here on the mount. Raspberry, a uh, lefty junior, batting 306 on the season. He'll take his first pitch a little outside for ball number one. Raspberry has played in all 26 games so far for McNeese State. Second third on the team in home runs with four on the season. The 1-0 pitch coming in too far inside and low. 2-0 count here with two outs for the Sam Houston State Bearcats facing off against the McNeese State Cowboys. The 2-0 pitch right down the middle for strike number one. Hopefully Gosset can keep this up here. 2-1 pitch coming down. That'll be pop back foul. It's going into the seat. <laughs> People getting a little concerned over there. That ball was coming down pretty pretty hard. That'll even everything up at two. Clayton Raspberry re readjusting the gloves, stepping back into the batter's box. Try to make something happen here from McNeese. Two-two pitch out of the strike zone. That'll make it a full count here. Go set working around the plate right now, trying to figure out what is going to work, what's not going to work here on early in this game. Yes, he's going to walk him. That pitch too far inside and too low. Raspberry will take his base on balls, and that'll bring up cleanup batter number 11, third baseman Carson Maxwell for McNeese State. He yeah, has ras uh, Raspberry here on the first base. Riley Gosset will work from the stretch now. A we'll peek over at first at Raspberry. First pitch right down the middle of the plate for a strike. Correction here is actually Riley Gossett. Foul off. Raspberry will have to make his way back to first base. Thought he had a easy steal there. Yeah, he thought he thought he was gonna take that one.
Everybody getting resituated back in here, batter back in the batter's box, pitcher back on the mound, up behind the plate. We are ready for the 0-2 pitch here with two outs. Runner on first. Throw over to first. Try to pick him off. He'll remain safe. Carson Maxwell batting 287 on the season. 27 RBIs. Leading his team in that category. Breaking ball will get him a swing and a miss, and that will retire the side. We'll be back here at Don Sander Stadium in 60 seconds. Thank you for tuning in. 90.5 KSSU. Welcome back here at Don Sanders Stadium. We're at the bottom of the first, and at the top of the mount, we have Jonathan Ellison pitching for your McNeese Cowboys. We missed the uh, first batter for Sam Houston State, Clayton Harp, singled off into the right field. He is sitting up on first base with number two batting second, playing second base, Riley McKnight. Jonathan Ellison again pitching the bunt right there. Third baseman will dive and will not make oh. the catch, and runners will advance to second, and Bradley McKnight will get him a single. Seems like the Cowboys really couldn't get a hold of that one there. Now the third baseman came down really hard, tried to make the play, but it's a couple inches too short. But, hey, you know, sports and life is a game of inches. <laughs> I agree with you. Coming up to bat for the Sam Houston State Bearcats, number 17, playing third base, Colton Cowsley. The freshman. Certainly he's starting, batting in the three-hole as a true freshman, batting 378 on the season. It's absolutely incredible for a freshman to be batting anything close to that. Barely see freshmen playing, let alone going out there and producing at such a high level. Yes, I agree. Runners on first and second. Ellison on the mound. Ellison, left-handed. Junior, 2.18 ERA on the season. That won't be fouled back. Let's see if the Bearcats can get all the bases filled here. If Kowser can uh, knock this one out into the outfield with the speed of Harp, probably will knock him in. Looks down for the 1-1 pitch. 
swing. It'll be grounded over to the Ellison. Ellison will throw it over to second. Throw will not go to first, so we'll just get the out at second. Runners on the corner at first and third. One out here. Batting cleanup for Sam Houston will be number eight, first baseman Hunter Hearn, the senior batting 271 on the season. Team high four home runs. He'll swing and miss on his first pitch. Looks like he was a little too late on that one. Yeah, Hearn really trying to get something going here with one out and runners on the corner. Ellison's pitch will be a little too low. I'll go with it for a ball right there. The third baseman for the Bearcats look eager, looks eager to steal that home plate and get a score here for the Bearcats. Right, he's taking a healthy little, little lead off there. Ellison's pitch will go high for another ball. Ellison's 2-1 pitch coming up here. He'll throw over to first, try to keep the run over there honest. Let him know that he's still keeping an eye out on him. Ellison working from the stretch here. 2-1 pitch. Be popped over the shortstop's head, and one runner will come down for Sam Houston as Hearn will earn himself a RBI single. That moves the other runner to second base. Runners on first and second for Sam Houston here, knocking in their first run of the game here in the bottom of the first with only one out. Good start here for the Bearcats. Now that, that shortstop for McNeese, Reed Borquet, just couldn't quite get up there. Made, made a good effort, but that'll knock in one run for the Bearcats. It's Jack Rogers, designated hitter, batting in the fifth spot, lining up on the left side of the plate. His first pitch will swing and foul back. Rogers with a pretty ideal situation here for batter. Runners on first and second with only one out. Bearcats have had a very active bat so far. Allison peeks back to the runner at second. Pitch will be a little too hot. I'll go for a ball. Rogers looks like he has a strong swing to him. Rogers this season batting 296, 10 RBIs, and tied for second with three home runs this season. Two one count here. Ellison's pitch will be swung on and popped over to right field. Right field will step up and make the catch as Rogers flies out over the right or to left field, excuse me. Two outs here for the Bearcats. Still have two bases, two spots filled on base, first and second. Jordan Ken up to bat. And he'll line that one over to left. McNeese guy comes in and makes a diving catch, and he will be out. What a play by the left fielder for McNeese. That was a nice catch right Peyton there. Peyton Harden just came through, and freshman, might I add, dove out for the out. We'll be back here in about 30 seconds here from Don Center Stadium. I'm Evan Schumard here with Tony. We'll catch you here shortly.
we're back at the beginning of the second inning here. The first batter for the uh, McNeese Cowboys is going to be Peyton Harden. On the mound for Sam Houston is still starting pitcher. Number 24, the right-handed senior, Riley Gossett. Gossett still warming up over here as we're awaiting number 16, Jake Dickerson. He'll be leading things off here in the top of the second for McNeese. Weather today, not ideal baseball weather. Little, little mist, light rain before the game. Sky's a little gloomy, but no real rain coming down right now. Might add a uh, little extra conditions for, uh, you know, outfielders and infielders. The ball might be a little slick. That's maybe why the third baseman couldn't get a hold of the catch right there for the McNeese Cowboys at the in the first inning. Yep, all those little things add up, make the game a game. Gossett's pitch. Be high. Ball number one. Dickerson wasn't having any of that. Keeping a good eye right there. Not falling for the bait. 1-0 pitch. That one will be popped over into foul territory and it's going to find its way out of play. Evens thing up at a 1-1 count. Righty versus lefty here. Righty on the mound, lefty at the plate. Riley's 1-1 one, one pitch. Swung on and missed. Gossett with the advantage here on the count. 1-2. No outs. One two pitch. Late swing, chopped it at the last second, made it a foul ball. The count will hold at 1 2. Now um, we'll walk up and uh, give Riley a, a new ball. Cracking a smile with each other. It's, it's always <laughs> nice to see you know, yeah. positive interaction between the umpires and players because you, know, you don't always agree with what they got to say, especially yeah. as a pitcher. You know, you think you might put that ball in the strike zone. Umpire might think otherwise, but good relations here early. The one two pitch. That'll be popped over into right field and will land. Dickerson will find himself on first base with a single to start off the top of the second for McNeese. Let's see if McNeese can get a good start here. I already have someone on base. First base. And coming to bat is going to be number ten. Nate Fisbeck, the second baseman. Fisbeck, righty, junior, batting 262 on the season. Got his first pitch, will be high, up by the hands for ball number one. Fisbeck towards the inside part of the batter's box. He'll look down a strike, even the count at one. Dickerson on first for McNeese State. Swung over to third. Third baseman can't quite get the ball in the glove. That'll go as an error for him. Freshman Colton Kowser can't quite corral the ball in. Runners on first and second for McNeese State now. That'll bring up Brett Welton, number 13 starting catcher for McNeese State, batting in the seventh spot. It 
see if McLeese can get something on the board here. Runners on first and second for Welton, batting 381 on the season. First plate appearance today, showing bunt. Can't connect, go down for strike number one. Gossett put that pitch just a little outside where Welton can make contact. One pitch coming down. Shows bunt again. Pulls back at the last second, though. We'll go for it. Ball number one. Walton does not show bunt. And he'll swing and miss right there for strike number two. Gossett looking to get himself out of a sticky situation that he's gotten himself into early here in the second inning. Runners on first and second with no outs. One, two count. Gossett's pitch will be swung on and fouled back. The count will hold at one ball, two strikes. Still here with no outs with runners on first and second for McNeese State. Gossett should really look to strike his man out here at bat. A very scary situation. Maybe give him something to tease him with. Maybe a little breaking ball since he is up in the count. Can afford to maybe give him one or two tease pitches. One, two pitch. He'll give him a fastball. That'll go for a ball. Try to give him something. Get him swinging. I agree. I agree. 2-2 two, two count here. Gossett's pitch. We fouled again. Down the first base line to the Cowboys dugout. You see both men on base kind of standing out, trying to steal the other bases. Yeah. Get a head that. start. Yeah, as soon as that ball comes off the bat, they're, they're gone. Gossett's 2-2 pitch will be popped over to the left field where the out will be made. Runners will hold at first and second as the Bearcats will get the first out here in the top of the second. That was a good chance for Wellen to make something happen. Made contact into the outfield, but didn't have enough mustard on it. <laughs> Only made it about halfway out there. Still was a couple hundred feet short. Coming up to bat for McNeese will be Jacob Strassner, first baseman, rocking number 17, lining up on the right side of the plate. That first pitch will be fouled down the right field line. Had some good air under that, but was a little too late on his contact. Gossett leaning in, has his pitch now. A one pitch coming in. He swung on, line right up the gap as a runner will round third for McNeese. That throw will not be on time as he'll slide down and get the first run for the Cowboys. Okay. RBI single for Strassner there. Evens things up here at one in the top of the second inning with only one out. Runners on first and second still for the Cowboys. Batting in the nine hole will be number one shortstop, Reed Borke. He's got a, a good situation here. Runners on, only one out. Got to peeking back a couple of times. He'll put that first pitch inside, ball number one. Gossett's really been working around the plate so far. A lot of fastballs, a couple breaking balls in what he believes would be ideal situations. 
The 1-0 pitch. Swung on and will be called for a strike. Right fielder seems to be just a little further back than center and left fielder. Borke is a lefty. More likely to drive it off into right field. He'll take that pitch for a ball. 2-1 count now. Let's see if Borke can keep the uh, momentum for the Cowboys here while they have two people on base, first and second base. Gossett's 2-1 pitch will be swung on and missed. Borke was swinging for the fences right there. Good pitch from Gossett, keeping them honest. Putting one right down the plate, gave him one, but Borke could not make contact. 2-2 two, two count here. Gossett will put that one inside, and Borke will swing and miss. He'll strike out, stro oh, excuse me, out number two now for the Sam Houston State Bearcats. Heading back to the top of the lineup for the Cowboys. Leadoff man, Peyton Harden. He is 0 for 1 today. The freshman. Yeah, there's a couple starting freshmen for both squads. He'll show bunt, and that'll be foul back. Peyton Harden, the freshman starting left fielder for McNeese. While Sam Houston has two freshmen out there in the starting lineup. Jackson Lofton, shortstop. Colin Kowser, the third baseman. It's good to see some young talent out here for both teams. Right futures ahead of him. Big swing and a miss right there. 0-2 now. Gossett putting some, some good heat at the plate. Trying to get himself out of this sticky situation with runners on first and second. 0-2 count. Two outs here. Still waiting for his pitch. Pump calls time. Home plate umpire, Kevin Kennedy. First base umpire is Chris Simmons. And third base is Jeff Mitten. The officiating today's game. 0-2 pitch. Fouled back. Count will hold at 0-2. Gossett looking to get out of this inning. Just needs one more strike. It doesn't seem like Harden is getting full contact on his hits here. No, he's been uh, just, just a hair late on a couple of his swings. The wind's starting to pick up out there. Gossett will Try to pick off the runner at second. Decides not to throw. Wind blowing off to right field. It's the little things like that that, you know, are the difference between an easy out and the ball getting a couple feet away from you. And then maybe possibly a run scores. And the contact goes up the middle. Shortstop will dive. He'll hold. Go to third. Oh, runner, a little pickle situation right here. To the catcher, and he'll get out. And got himself in a bad situation there. <laughs> uh, yes, Sam Houston State gets the out. Only one run given up there. Score is one to one. We'll be back here in 30 seconds. That's half the battle with Colin Sports. And we're back here at Don Sanders Stadium where the game is tied one to one and we're in the second bottom of the second inning. Ellison's still on the mound. Give up one run in the first. 
Both teams pretty even so far. Three hits for both squads. One run in for both. Sam Houston had one error. Third baseman Colton Kowser just couldn't quite hold on to the ball over there at third. Gave up a base hit. Going to be Gavin Johnson batting here for the Sam Houston Bearcats. In the seventh spot. Johnson today's starting catcher. He'll swing and miss on his first pitch. Johnson rocking number 43 this season. A little unorthodox number. He'll take strike number two right there looking. Johnson has a .329 batting average this season. That's a good amount. He's also got 17 RBIs. So he's very active in the seven hole. He'll swing and chop that one over to short. Shortstop will come up. Throw is way off there target. They'll go off and Johnson will just trot back to first. Keep his easy single. That'll go down as an error for the Cowboys. Really threw it over his head there. Yeah, that one uh, made its way over right by the dugout for the Cowboys. <laughs> yeah. Reed Bork, short stop for McNeese. Just put that one a little too far out of play for the first baseman, Jacob Stressner. Eric Bonnert up to bat for the Bearcats. Runner on first, no outs. First pitch will go low and outside for ball number one. Been a pretty even contest so far. Both teams kind of going hit for hit, run for run. Now error for error. Ellison from the stretch. Put that one right down the middle for a strike. Eric Bonner is a sophomore from Cypress, Texas. Local Houston area guy, as most of Sam Houston is. Ellison's 1-1 one, one pitch. Go for ball number two there. I'm going to put it too much inside there on that one. Gavin Johnson at first. Getting on. Decent lead off over there. Doesn't look like he's going for a steal. Ellison will still peek over and stare him down. This pitch will be swung on and fouled back. 2-2 Two -two count. Sun's starting to come out just a, just a little bit here in Huntsville, Texas. Still see the wind coming into effect here out on the field. Bonner will line that one over to right field for a single. Gavin Johnson advances to second. And that'll bring up to the plate Jackson Lofton, the right handed shortstop wearing number seven. Freshman. It's one of the freshmen we were talking about earlier. Starting for Sam Houston, one of the two. See what the freshman got up his sleeve right here with runners on first and second with no outs. Shows bunt and he'll draw back for ball number one. Lofton again will show bunt. He'll make contact. Ellison will throw over to first, get the easy out, but runners will advance to second and third. Sacrifice bunt there for Lofton being a team player. Getting runners advanced into scoring position. And that'll take oh, us okay. back to the top of the lineup for Sam Houston. Clayton Harp, center fielder from El Campo. Stepping up to bat 
He is one for one on the day. Sitting at a good batting average as well. Three three zero two. He'll take that first pitch way high and way outside. Ball number one. Harp in the back of the batter's box. Swing and that one will be fouled out. Go down for strike number one for Harp. Harp is also second in RBIs with 20 on the season. Yeah, overall, everybody on the Sam Houston State roster has got, for the most part, besides Bonner and Jackson, who have the least amount of plate appearances on the team, all have double-digit RBIs. Everybody contributing equally throughout the lineup. That's what you like to see. A good team effort. It's the little things like that, you know, when you don't really have a true weakness in your lineup that allow you to go to the NCAA tournament, such as, you know, Sam Houston has in the past couple seasons. Yeah, He'll swing and miss right there. 2-2 two, two count. One out here with runners in scoring position. Leadoff batter, Harp, awaiting his 2-2 pitch from Ellison. Harp will foul that one back to the screen. Trying to stay alive in this. Anything to the outfield is a guaranteed run, essentially. Harp just needs to get this one out into play to get some runs going for the Bearcats. But Jonathan Ellison probably has plans otherwise. <laughs> You're not going to let him get it easily. No. And he'll swing and miss and strike out. Ellison put that one where Harp cannot make contact. And that'll go down for strike number two. Or out number two, excuse me. Riley Big Knight stepping up for the Bearcats. Two outs here. Going to definitely need to put this one into play with only two outs. Sac sacrifice bunts and flies are out of the equation now. Bearcats have to get something out there if they want to get another score here. This is a great opportunity for the Bearcats to extend their lead. Ellison's 1-0 pitch. Fouled. Ooh. Oh, it went over towards the tent. Some people were standing there. <laughs> that ball was about a foot lower. It might have bopped somebody in the face. Allison will post up from the stretch here with the 1-1 count. Ellison's pitch will be a little too far inside. Go for ball number two. McKnight batting a modest 295 on the season. Batting in the two hole. The two one pitch coming in. Be fouled back. Even things up at two. Looks like McKnight is trying to knock this one out here. Really can't get a full contact on the ball. Yeah, it's just the little things, you know, you gotta watch the ball all the way to the bat. Make sure you get solid contact. Ellison with his 2-2 two -two pitch. Be too far inside. Full count now. Ellison steps off the mound to regather himself. Pop back up. Wouldn't want him ball in there here. Yeah, no, definitely do not want to have bases loaded. That would be very tragic for McNeese. That one again will be fouled back by McKnight. Playing some mind games here between the two. Ellison's 3-2 pitch coming in. That one will be popped back foul again. McKnight nor Ellison 
really refuses to give the other one any kind of advantage <laughs> here, just kind of going back and forth, playing some patty cake. Yeah, I agree with you. So, swing and a miss, then you got a foul, a ball. Battle of wills here at this point. Full count. Mitch will be swung on and knocked over into center field. Catch will be made, and that will retire the side. Sam Houston State Bearcats, one. McNeese State Cowboys, one. We'll catch y'all in the top of the third in 60 seconds. We're back here at Don Sanders Stadium at the top of the third inning. And you have Riley Gossett, Gossett excuse me, pitching here for your Sam Houston Bearcats. Hopefully looking to get a strong start here to get them back on the batting side. Sam Houston still warming up over here, Wayne, for Selman. He'll be leading things off for McNeese. Coming up for McNeese, we will have Selman Raspberry followed by Maxwell. Selman has a pretty good batting average as well, sitting at 3.320 and 19 RBIs for the season. And he is tied for third on his team with RBIs. And Selman will step up to the plate. Right-handed senior. Made the final out playing center. Got the pop out. And he'll step up. Gossett will work from the windup. And he will get a single knocked up into center. So McNeese State with a First pitch single, got one on board, or on the bases, excuse me, already, with one on the board. This will bring up number 34, Clean Raspberry, designated hitter. Walked at his first appearance. Batting 307 on the season. First pitch will be called for strike number one. Raspberry looking to get something going for the Cowboys. Try to extend their lead. I'm assuming they tried to gain a lead as they've been tied at one. Pitch will be outside for ball number one. One one count now. You see Selman on first looking pretty anxious to get to second base here. Goss will take a peek over to the runner on first. Keep the throwback, keep him honest, let him know that he is indeed paying attention to him. Does not intend to give up a stolen base here. Raspberry awaiting the 1-1 one, one pitch. That will be in the dirt. Ball number two. Two-one one pitch coming in. Be swung and called for a strike. Even 2-2 two, two count now. 
Sam Houston looking to get the first out of the inning. As Selman got a single in his first pitch, he swung on. That'll be fouled down the right field line. Count will still hold at an even 2-2. Two -two. Prosit is kind of walking around. Walks back up to the mound. Now. Raspberry is second on his team with RBIs sitting at 22 RBIs for the season. And that's really what you want from your three-hole batter. That pitch will be swung on and foul back. Yeah, you really want your uh, third and fourth guys to be more of your like power hitters. You know, really make sure that they get some solid contact and drive in some runs. Mm -hmm. Raspberry doing a great job of that. Batting third. Someone's still on first. You know, throw the ball over there, trying to keep him on first. Gossett has made a couple pickoff attempts over there. Like I said, mostly just keeping him honest, letting him know that he is indeed paying attention to him. Not going to give up any free bases here. The 2 2 pitch. He swung over to the first. Throw over to second. Right back for the double play for Sam Houston. That will get oh, two outs right there. Yep, first baseman made the smart decision to throw to second. Shortstop came over. Made throw back to first for the double play. Two outs now for Sam Houston. McNeese looking to get something going with Maxwell coming up to bat. He is 0-1 on the day. Maxwell has been the leading RBI batter for McNeese, batting in the cleanup spot at number four. First pitch will be swung on and missed. Maxwell took the bait. Pitch was a little high. Now it's 0 1 pitch coming in. Now it won't be popped way up. First baseman calls for it. Goes over, gathers it. And that will nice. retire the side. No run scored for McNeese. Score stays even at one. We'll be back here from live at Don Sanders Stadium in 60 seconds. Welcome back. We're going to start here at the bottom of the third here at Don Sanders Stadium. Coming to bat for the Bearcats is going to be Colton Kowser. The third baseman. And also the freshman. Calls time. Looks like he got something in his eye. Maybe a little nervous. You never know. <laughs> he has 0 of 1 on the day. Still kind of messing around with his eye, it looks like. The Bearcats do play on a turf field, so you know them. there's a possibility that you know, get some of them black beads up in your eyes. First pitch will be swung on and 
Kowser will knock that one center field for a single. It didn't seem like anything was in his eye on that one. <laughs> uh, he had his eye on the ball <laughs> right there. Absolutely. Good contact for him right there. That'll put Hearn up to bat. One of one on the day. Hunter Hearn from Crosby, Texas. Senior. He'll swing and make contact on his first pitch as well. Ground that one over to left field. Two straight back-to-back -back singles for the Bearcats on two consecutive pitches. Off to a great start here. Yeah, got to be a little concerning for Ellison. <laughs> it's probably a little confidence. Rodgers stepping up. Runners on first and second here with no outs. And he'll swing on his first pitch. Make the second out. Oh, he'll get the out at second. Decides not to throw over to first. That'll put runners on the corners at first and third for Sam Houston. Three straight batters all swung on their first pitch. Liked what they saw, but couldn't make good contact that time. That will bring up number 25, Jordan Cannon, the senior right fielder. One out here. Ellison's first pitch. Be a ball number one to Cannon. Cannon, oh of one on the day, but still betting at a team high 384 average. That's that's incredible. Ball number two there. All plate umpire Kevin Kennedy kind of held for a second. 2 0 count for Cannon. One out, runners on first and third. Looking to drive in the runner on third. Swing and foul that one back. I'll go down for strike number one for Cannon. See if he can bring the Bearcats home on this on this hit here. Both teams have left runners on the bases, which you never want to do. That's always a, always hurts seeing that you know leaving free runs on the base. He'll swing and pop that one over to shortstop. And he'll throw over to second. And he'll make the throw to first, but it'll be too late. They get the out at second. One runner will come down for the Bearcats. They extend their lead to 2-1. Gavin Johnson will be stepping up. Today's starting catcher for the Bearcats. Johnson coming out of San Antonio. But here in the bottom of the third, he's got two outs and a runner on first. He'll swing, and that ball will be lined over to the left. Harden will step up and make the catch. Retire the side. Bearcats score one. We'll catch you all on the top of the fourth in 60 seconds.
welcome back to Don Sanders Stadium. I'm here with Evan, and my name is Tony, and we're here at here watching Sam Houston State playing the McNeese Cowboys at the beginning of the fourth inning. And your pitcher for the Bearcats is still Riley Gossett, and coming to bat is number 16, Jake Dickerson for your Cowboys. Bottom of the third. Cats knocked in another run. Extended their lead to 2-1. Six total hits on the day for the Cats. While the Cowboys have a modest four. Dickerson will foul his first pitch back. No balls. One strike here. Gossett so far having a pretty good day at the mound. His 0-1 pitch will come in. Now it will be flied out over into left field, and it will drop, and it will remain fair. He'll turn over, go to second. The throw coming in. Called safe. There's a double right there for Dickerson. Good start for the Cowboys. Fisbeck will come up now for McNeese State. Runner in scoring position on second base. Having a little conversation with the third base coach. Figure out what the what the game plan is right here. Possible bunt situation maybe. And that's gonna be Dickerson's fourth double of the season. Still waiting for everybody to get set back up. Waiting for the ump. Put his mask back on so we can get moving on with the game. Gossett's first pitch to the Bessick. Bunt attempt. Go foul. Strike number one. Yeah. Hey. He thought whenever he went over to go talk to his third base coach, thinking Fisbeck might have been uh, coming out showing bunt. First pitch, sure enough, showed bunt. <laughs> see if the Bearcats are going to be ready for that. Possibly could see this again. Fisbeck step back up into the batter's box. It's 0 1 pitch. He swung on and missed. Strike number two. Cowboys with the runner on second base. Gossett so far today has had good command of his pitches. Not really giving up too much. It's been a back and forth style game between the two. Pitch will be a little too far off the plate. Go for ball number one. Home plate umpire wasn't wasn't falling for it. Neither was Fisbeck as he just watched that one go by him. One two count here for Fisbeck at the plate. Gossett on the mound. Pete's back to second. Delivers the pitch. That one will be popped up, and it'll drop over into right center field. Runner will hold up at third as Fisbeck will find himself on base with a single. Runner on first and third now for McNeese. Brett Wilton will step up next for the Cowboys. Try to see if he can get anything going with no outs here. Cowboys in a good situation here. Bearcats trying to get themselves out of the situation. Gossett gonna have to be a little more, a little more command of his pitches. He's usually found himself, you know, in bad positions with runners in scoring position, but has gotten out of them for the most part. His first pitch will be outside and high for ball number one. First 
pitch will peak back first. 1-0 pitch in the dirt. Two balls and no strikes here for Welton. Welton keeping a good eye on the ball so far. Up in the count. Might take another pitch here unless he absolutely just really loves it. All depends on where Gossett puts this ball. We'll put the one on the outside part of the plate for his first strike of the at-bat. Well, and didn't like that one. He just watched it go past him for a strike. But when you're up in the count, you know, you can give up a ball or so. That pitch will be chopped over to second. Thrown over to the shortstop at second. Got the out there. And they do indeed turn the double play. Two outs now for the Bearcats. Got themselves out of that hole. They're second but, a runner, time. but the runner will that. still score. Evens the game back again. 2-2 two -two this time now. Gossett going to go from windup. Strass number will pop that one up over into foul territory, and that one will just find its way a little too far out of play into the grass in right field. Strassner one one on the day. A one pitch. Be swung on, chopped over to third. The out will be made. McNeese scores one, evens the game here at Don Sanders Stadium, two apiece. We'll catch y'all in 30 seconds. We're back here at Don Sanders Stadium, coming back at the bottom of the fourth inning. And we have Jonathan Ellison pitching for your McNeese Cowboys. You see the Cowboys are warming up here, awaiting Bear the Bearcats pitcher, I mean batter, number five. Eric Bonner. These two teams faced off yesterday with McNeese winning 4-3 to three here at Don Center Stadium last night. Both teams, again, having another fairly even contest, both with two runs, six hits, and an error apiece. Nelson's first pitch will be called for strike number one. Bonner at the plate, starting in left field today. One and one already. I'll take that second pitch outside for ball number one. So what have you liked so far from Sam Houston as far as the defense goes, Tony? I feel like they're playing really good defense as we've seen two times um, them getting a double out on the plays, which kind of hurried up the process. And speeds things up a little bit, yeah, you know, makes it easier, you know, yeah, double plays. <laughs> yeah. Turning them out. And I think on the Cowboys in they're they're more slow. And like they take their time on defense. A little more a little more methodical. Mm hmm Not very many big plays. Two straight foul balls from Bonnert. One two count now. Coming down, he'll swing, he'll pop it right over to Ellison. You know, just 
make the easy throw to first for the first out of the inning. Ellison playing some, some good defense there. Was ready for the ground ball. Coming straight off the bat. That's got to be kind of scary, you know, for a pitcher sometimes. You know, you see yeah. a lot. Fast one. The ball just gets absolutely ripped right towards <laughs> him. You know, you never know because your body's just completely exposed, you know, when you're coming down. Mm -hmm. and that ball's coming at you, you know, 100 plus miles an hour. Yeah. Lofton up to bat for Sam Houston. The shortstop will take his first pitch for ball number one. Ellison's 1 0 pitch coming in. Gets his first strike at the at bat. Pretty good crowd here at Don Sanders Stadium in Huntsville at Sam Houston State University. Seems Even McNeese right. has a fair amount of people, you know, just coming from Louisiana, not too far of a drive. Come watch some baseball here. You know, the weather's not not perfect, but you know, it's still ideal. You know, got got a wind going. It's not raining anymore. Always a positive. Two one pitch coming in. Call for ball number three. Looks like the weather has gotten a little better. Yeah, the sun's could definitely come out a little bit more. The sun's behind us. Overcast. Lights are on already, though. Breaking ball will go for strike number two. Seems like Ellison has gotten more comfortable here throughout this game. Yep. Fighting in this at bat right here with the full count. He has one out. No runners on. 3-2 pitch coming down. That one will be chopped over to second base. Has a hard time getting any. Oh. Couldn't quite get the ball out of the glove. Threw that one into the ground. Go as an error. Runner on first. Lofton. Gets a little lucky right there. You know, should have been a uh, quote unquote easy out, but you know, that's why you got to be precise on everything you do. Yes. Can't give up easy plays like that. It's another error for McNeese. Probably took that one for granted there. Thought it was going to be an easy out. Harp stepping up the bat. At the top of the lineup, this will be his third at bat on the day. One or two so far. He'll take that first pitch for strike number one. It's like when you're in such a close game like this, the errors are usually what comes back to haunt you. Mm -hmm. Later in the game, you know, when you're tied down by a run or so, it's, it's the little things that always add up. Check swings, but still go down for a strike. I'm pretty sure that the Cowboys dugout isn't very happy with the defensive uh, errors so far from the Cowboys. As we've seen quite a few throughout this game. I won't be fouled back. You can almost say you have uh, seen too, too many. Yeah. <laughs> Never want any errors. On the Bearcats side, that there hasn't been that many. Yeah, not not too many faults. Only had the one, you know, the mm -hmm. third base. But yeah. other than that, moved on from it. Played some good defense. Turned some double plays. Good glove work from everybody. Ellison's 0-2 pitch coming in. Too far outside. Go for the first ball. Harp finds himself down in the count. One ball, two strikes, one out, runner on. Harp still staying patient, though. Called strike three as Harp does not agree with that. Shakes his head, flips his bat, and will take the, the stroll back to the dugout. That'll bring up Riley McKnight for the Bearcats. Ellison with a good good ball on the outside of the plate. Getting that strike out there. Two outs now. We'll try to pick off the runner at first. Jackson Lofton saw it coming. Like when you're going against a, a lefty pitcher and you're on first, you know, you can see their leg a little easier, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's can be a little tricky though, you know, if they bring their knee too far towards the plate. Mm -hmm. you know, and there he goes again, trying to pick him off. Keeping him on his toes over there. McKnight up to 
to bat for the Bearcats. Another pickoff attempt. Ellison probably not very comfortable over there. Lofton on first. Keeps checking the ball back down over there. Let's see if we get a pitch from him this time. He'll actually deliver a pitch, which will be foul for strike number one. McKnight batting one of two today, 291 overall so far in the 2019 season. Bearcats looking to gain another Southland Conference title. And would love to make a, another appearance in the College World Series later on. Ellison again will try to pick off Lofton over at first. He's definitely not comfortable with Lofton over there at first base. Lofton doesn't even have an uh, attempt on the season. That ball will be fouled back. 0-2 count here. Bottom of the fourth inning. Knight looking to make something happen for the Bearcats. Finds himself down 0-2 in this count. Keeping his composure in the box. No swing. A little too late on that one. It'll be fouled. Ellison trying to find a way to get this last out of the inning. So we can get the Cowboys back up to the plate. So 2 pitch will come, be high, up in the face of McKnight. One, two pitch coming in. That one will be high. Even things at two. McKnight staying patient on the last couple pitches. Keeping his eye on the ball. It can be a little nerve wracking when you're down 0 2, but even now at 2. Ellison staring down Lofton at first. No deliver. Now one will be popped up over to left. Harden dives again, but does not make the catch this time. Runner will hold at third. Throw over to second. Not in time as McKnight gets a double. Runner advances to third. And now here with two outs, you find the Bearcats with runners in scoring position. That was McKnight's second double of the season. Good good job right there by McKnight fighting. The whole time was down originally 0-2 in the count. Stayed patient, found the pitch that he liked. Made good enough contact to get a double. Colton Kowser. Coming up to bat. This is the freshman third baseman we've been talking about this afternoon. One and two, batting 406 on the season. He'll take his first pitch for ball number one. You already know Kowser's thinking here. He wants to drive in two, but for sure probably needs to get one in. Ellison's 1 0 pitch. And he swung on and fouled back. 1 1 count now. You see Lofton over there eager to get to home plate. Yeah, with that third baseman so far away from the base, he's not worried about getting picked off or anything like that. So he's just trying to make sure that when Kowser, if Kowser makes contact, that he, he's going home. There's that contact right there. We're drawing over to the left. But Harden will go over and make the catch, and that will retire the side. Bearcats leave two on, both in scoring position at second and third. Game is still drawn at 2 2. We'll be back for the top of the fifth in 60 seconds.
here at and we're back here at Don Sanders Stadium looking to get into the beginning of the fifth you still have Riley Gossett pitching for your Sam Houston Bearcats and at bat for the McNeese Cowboys is going to be Reed Bork, Bork. Big swing and a miss there. Gossett giving him some, some good quality heat right there on that pitch. Bork already 0 1 on the day. Looking to get his first run hit. He'll swing and miss right there for strike number two. Looks like Goss Gossett is coming out pretty strong here at the beginning of the fifth inning. Gossett. It's 0 2 pitch coming in now. Will be fouled back. Count will hold at 0 2. Got some uh, people in the stands with some blankets over here. I don't really think it's that cold, but you know, hey, Texas, if it gets below 65, 70, <laughs> pe pe people bringing out the hoodies and blankets. <laughs> yeah, I agree. With no sun out here, it's probably a little chillier out there than it is up here in the booth. It's nice and comfortable up here. Probably pretty windy out there. Oh, yeah, most definitely. As you can see, the flag's out in right center. Blowing. One, two, count here. Gossett delivers. Called strike three. Bork will go down looking. As a, that will bring up Harden back to the top of the lineup for the McNeese State Cowboys. Harden's been very active on the defensive end. Yeah, make, making a that diving play earlier in the game. Mm -hmm. Made, made uh, another diving attempt. Didn't get that one, but he's been, uh, been very uh, agile out there. I'd say he's probably one of the quicker guys on McNeese. Mm -hmm. Just looking at his movement in the outfield, covering a lot of ground quickly. Harden there with a good eye. Let's that pitch go for ball number one. And he's another freshman out there on the field. A bright future ahead for McNeese State's Peyton Harden. Playing in his 25th game of the season. And he'll line that one off foul. Some good contact there. Had a little bit of dinger potential on there, but was a little too late on it. Yeah, he was ready to take off on that one. <laughs> yeah, Harden obviously has some good speed on him, so he'll probably make his way around the bases, maybe find himself in a, with a double when he should have had a single or, you know, triple when he should have only had a double. Mm-hmm. He also leads his team with seven steals, seven of eight on the season. Only been caught once. Check swing. Still be called for a strike. Seeing those steals helps you realize how fast he really is. Absolutely. And as the leadoff batter, you know, you get somebody on base, get them to steal a couple of bases, and then you find yourself in scoring position. 2-2 Two -two will be lined. Foul again. See if he can connect here on this pitch. Gossett going to try to get this strikeout right here. 2-2 two -two pitch. Go high. Full count now. It's a battle of will at this point. Gossett got to put the ball where he wants it, whether he wants to try to get him chasing the ball a little bit or wants to give him a breaking ball. We'll see what we got right here. You know, put that one high. Harden will walk. That ball was uh, way above Harden, who's not very tall. But <laughs> that was an easy, easy no swing for him as he'll trot his way to first. That'll bring up Shane Selman for the Cowboys now. Now Gossett has to be on the lookout for 
Harden to steal some bases here. Yeah, both teams have been uh, they they, they don't really care. They'll 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 throw over there, try to pick you off, you know. Mm -hmm. As we saw uh, Ellison do that three consecutive times. Last inning, that first pitch will be a little too far inside. Ball number one. Harden with a pretty, still pretty close to first. Not really looking like he's trying to go. That first switch will be oh. lined over to the pitcher, and he'll make another. the catch for another double play, and that will retire the side. Gossett keeping his head on a swivel, makes the catch and throws it over to first. Harden was already making his way to second. 2-2 here. We'll catch all in the bottom of the fifth in 60 seconds. back here at the bottom of the fifth inning you have Ellison the pitcher for the Cowboys and don't forget that you're listening to 90.5 KSHU in Huntsville Texas here at Don Sanders Stadium Hunter Hearn coming out to bat for the Bearcats. Hearn will take that first pitch inside for ball number one. Hearn already two for two on the day, looking to keep the perfect streak going. He'll swing and miss right there. Good, good breaking ball right there from Ellison. That pitch will be knocked back foul. Move the count to one and two. Not a lot of contact on that hit right there. Well, made, made just enough to keep it out of play. Lined over to first. First baseman will dive out for it. Pitcher runs over. Ellison does not get his foot down in time as Hearn beats him out. First baseman sitting on the ground and distraught thought that huh. they had the out <laughs> from one fa first baseman to another. I'm sure Hearn feels for him, but he'll take his single anyway. With Hearn on first, that'll bring up number 44 designated hitter, Jack Rogers. Rogers, a Sophomore from Spring, Texas. About 45 minutes south of Huntsville. Just take down I-45 down. And you'll run into his hometown. Ellison will throw over to first. Rogers is uh, tied at second with home runs for the Bearcats. Sitting at three home runs for the season. Another pickoff attempt over there from Ellison. Hearn, one of two on stolen base attempts this season. Statistically not much of a threat, but if Ellison sees so, he will play accordingly. Ellison's pitch. Ball number one. You 
see Ellison very playing very aware here. Yeah, both pitchers have been uh been uh, keeping their heads on the swivel on defense. Big swing and a miss there from Rogers. Both pitchers stepping up, making some uh, ground ball catches. Mm -hmm. We saw last inning, Gossett caught the liner, hit right to him. Up calls time. There's a spare ball just chilling over there in left field. But yeah, both pitchers been uh been doing pretty solid on the mound and in the field as well. See what Ellison will do here. One one count, no outs, runner on first for the Bearcats. Rogers shows bunt, makes contact. Third baseman steps up. First baseman cannot get the short hop. Is that another error? Rogers be on first. Got a runner on second now. That'll bring up right fielder number 25, Jordan Cannon. Cannon with a absolutely perfect situation here for a batter. Two runners on, on first and second, no outs. Looking like a prime opportunity for the Bearcats to knock in some runs here. To try to get a lead again, still tied here at two. He shows bunt. Ellison will step up and make the out. Tries to throw it to second, but will not be in time. Good awareness by the Bearcat base runners to get back. Again, another great effort yeah, another. on defense by the pitchers. And stuff like that. You know, if that ball actually hits the ground, then, you know, you look at a possibility of at least one runner advancing if they don't turn the double play. Mm -hmm. Gavin Johnson from San Antonio, Texas, stepping up. Lefty number 43. 0 of 2 on the day looking to get his first hit. Would be a great time too with runners on first and second. Ellison will put that slider outside. See the first baseman for the Cowboys really playing off the base. Yep, with the lefty, you know, they got a, a slight little shift going on with the shortstop playing a little closer to second. called strike right there. 1-1 one, one count now. So that first baseman is on the on the hot corner right now. Nelson peeks back to the runner at second. Delivers his pitch. Swing and a miss there from Johnson. One ball, two strikes, one out. Johnson with 17 RBIs on the season, looking to add one, if not two more, maybe even three, right here. Pitch, late oh, swing and a miss yeah. there. Questionable choice by Johnson to take that swing. He'll strike out. Two outs now for the Cowboys. You would have thought he wouldn't have swung on that one. It was far out to the left. Yeah, he made a... Uh, last second decision to kind of swing at that threw his arms out there and prayed to at least foul it yeah. you know, try to stay alive but Ellison's pitch was too much for him this will bring up Bonnert the left fielder for the Bearcats one of two on the day he'll swing and pop that one up first baseman running over there that'll go too far out out of play we'll give Bonnert his first strike of the at bat Runners still on first and second for the Bearcats. McNeese states Jonathan Elson pitching. Ellison's pitch will be a ball right there. Looking to get out of this inning. Two strike. Or excuse me, two outs with one ball and one strike. One pitch 
Swung on and missed by Bonnert. Favorable count here for Ellison. Looking to get one more. And Sam Houston again does not want to leave runners on the bases. As they left runners on second and third last inning. There's a swing grounded over to second. Easy throw for the easy out at first. Score remains tied up 2-2 apiece. Here at Don Sander Stadium, you're listening to 90.5. We'll catch y'all in 60 seconds. We're back here at Don Sanders Stadium at the beginning of the sixth inning. The score is tied still 2-2. Two to two. You have number 34 coming to bat, Clayton Raspberry for the Cowboys. And it seems like we have a pitching change for the Bearcats. Dillard at the, or at the mound now. Left-handed pitcher. He's warming up here. Dillard, a freshman. Another freshman for the Bearcats. Playing in today's game, and I'll mark three of them. It's got to be uh, promising for Bearcat fans to see that their their future is getting some uh, some PT now. Raspberry at the plate. He'll swing and miss. Looks like he has a strong arm to him here. Bearcats made the decision to put a lefty on the mound. And he'll get his second straight strike there for 0-2 now. Gossett came in and did some solid work for the Bearcats. As Dillard will make a swing and a miss. And cut, catcher dropped it. He'll throw it over to first for the first out for Dillard in this inning. It's always a good feeling as a relief pitcher coming in and getting your first out. Confidence booster. Off the bat, yeah. came in through three straight strikes. Can't can't ask anything really better than that from a, a pitcher coming in, especially a freshman. Yeah, even in the, a close game like this, you know, putting a freshman on a big stage like this, gonna see what they're really made of. Dillard's pitch will be fouled back. Carson Maxwell at the plate for the Cowboys right now. It's kind of a new look for the batters, for, uh, the batters for the Cowboys, because now they were used to hitting from a right-handed pitcher, now going to a left-handed pitcher would kind of throw them off, really. Yep, and you know, when you get all, all the pitcher, you know, you get different pitch speeds, different types of pitches, you know. Mm -hmm. Now they have to balls. adjust. Yep, well, we'll see what Maxwell will do right here. He'll swing and miss again. One ball, two strikes, one out. Dillard so far coming in and putting the ball where, right where he wants it.
Miller's pitch will be a little too far outside, even the count at two. Maxwell still looking for his first hit of the game. As he'll take that pitch outside, move things to a full count here. Maxwell steps back up into the batter's box. Geller from the windup. Full count pitch will be knocked off into left field. Maxwell gets his first hit of the game. Gets himself a single there. That will bring up Dickerson to the plate for the McNeese State Cowboys. One on and one out. Jake Dickerson, starting right fielder for McNeese State. Coming in on the left side of the plate. Lefty versus lefty here. Should be an interesting matchup. Yep. Dickerson's already two of two on the day. He'll knock his first pitch back for a strike. Dickerson batting an outstanding 357 on the season with 30 hits and 16 RBIs. Very, very, very solid production there from the fifth batter in the lineup. Pitch gets away from Gavin Johnson just a little bit. 1-1 one, one count. Dillard. Looking down at Johnson, figuring out what pitch he's going to deliver. Peeks back to first. Delivers the pitch too far inside. Ball number two. Big ball drove way foul, but had dinger potential on that one. That one was not very high and very far, but too far to the right. Too way too far. Dickerson was a little late on that contact right there. 2-2 two -two count now. Dillard looking to get the out here. Two two pitch. Chop foul. First baseman almost stepped up and made the play, but went foul first. That'll still hold things at two two. Maxwell will trot back to first. He was already on his horse going to second when he saw the ball go off Dickerson's bat. The last thing McNeese needs here or wants here is uh, a double play. I don't Definitely sit them down and retire the side. Sam Houston looking for that double play. They've been getting it all game. Yeah, they've already got a couple so far. Let's see what Matt Dillard gives him right here on this 2-2 pitch. A big swing and a miss. That'll sit Dickerson down. He is no longer perfect on the day. That'll be his first time. He does not get on base. Good strikeout for Dillard. That'll be his second on the day. Fisbeck stepping up for the Cowboys with two outs and a runner on first. Diller might want to be careful here. Uh, Fisbeck is the leads the team in home runs for the Cowboys. And he makes some good contact right there. That ball will be lined over into left center. He'll hold up at first, but runner will advance to third. Runners on the corner now for McNeese State. Two outs. Dillard had a good start. But now finds himself with a runner in scoring position. With number 13, 
coming up to bat for McNeese. Be the catcher, Brent Welton. Welton has yet to get on base today, but still batting 348 on the season. Now would be a good time for him to get his first hit. More than likely we drive in the run from third. Dillard's pitch. Called down for strike one. Both teams so far today, you've had some good pitching, and but overall you've had some really good offense. Both teams, you know, getting on base, leaving runners on. At the same time, that pitch will be popped up. Shortstop going over to make the catch, and he will. That will retire the side. McNeese leaves runners on first and third. Reoccurring theme in today's game. Score remains tied up at two. We'll go to the bottom of the sixth here in 60 seconds. We're back here at Don Sanders Stadium at the bottom of the sixth inning. And you're listening to 90.5 KSHU Huntsville, Texas. We have the Cowboys warming up here and a change at pitcher, it seems. While we await the batter for the Bearcats. Pitching will be Will Dion, freshman left-hander. He'll come in and retrieve Ellison. Gave up two runs. We're all tied up here at two, getting ready for the bottom of the sixth. Let's see how the Bearcats will adjust to the different pitchers here. Jackson Lofton, starting shortstop, will be the first batter. No line. Dion's pitch back. out from the windup. O2 count here. Beyond's pitch. That one is out. Caught by the right fielder. It burst out on the Bearcats. Back to the top of the lineup. Harp coming in one of three on the day. 304 on the season still. He'll line the one over to first. That's going to be 
another out on the Bearcats. Up to bat will be McKnight. Riley McKnight will set up here with two outs. Swing and a miss there. Will Dion with very quick inning so far, getting two quick, easy outs. He'll bunt, and that ball will be fouled back into the stands. Almost made contact with someone there. <laughs> yeah. A couple of the ladies in the stands got a little scared when they saw the ball coming right at them. All good, though, here. We got the senior at bat, McKnight, versus the freshman, Dion, on the mound. Another foul right there. No balls, two strikes, two outs here. Dion coming in here, pitching excellent so far early on in the bottom of the six. Two quick outs, looking to get this third one. Favorable count for Will Dion. No balls, two strikes. Could give him a couple pitches here to play with, see what he does. McKnight. Made contact, but a little too late on it. We'll go foul. The Cats with nine hits today, looking to get in double digits right here. McNeese with eight hits on the day. Be fouled back. McKnight barely made enough contact right there to stay alive in this at bat. Yeah, he barely made contact on all of his swings here. To begin with, Dion definitely so far has had his number at this at bat. Dion with the long windup delay, you'll see him hold his leg right there and pitch. Very Clayton Kershaw esque, and as Clayton Kershaw does, strikes people out. And Will Dion comes in and will get three quick outs, no harm, no foul done by the Bearcats. Score is still tied here at two. You're listening to 90.5, and we'll be back in 60 seconds for the top of the seventh. We're back here at Don Sanders Stadium at the beginning of the seventh inning here. Pitching change for the Bearcats. Cody Wolf will come in. Matt Diller came in. Got two strikeouts last inning. But elected to move on to the right-hander, Cody Wolf. Cody Wolf is a junior. Again, a right handed pitcher. They went to a lefty for one inning, came right back to the right handed pitchers. Leading off for McNeese will be first baseman Jacob Strassner, the senior. Seems like the coach is trying to throw the batters off here. And giving them different looks. Last inning, they thought that they were going to. Be going against the lefty, but then they come out, get the gloves and the, and the bat on. See that they got a new pitcher. Strassner, one of two on the day. He'll pop that one up. 
to right center. Right fielder will call for it, make the easy catch for out number one. It always feels good uh, stepping in and getting your first out as a reliever. Yeah. Good early defense by the Bearcats. Good communication in the outfield. You know, you never want to see two outfielders run into each other. Although it is entertaining, it's not good <laughs> as far as uh, if you're in the dugout. Bork batting. And he'll pop that one over the third baseman's head. Single there for Bork. Gets his first hit of the day. That'll take us back to the top of the lineup for the Cowboys. Peyton Harden, left-handed freshman, left fielder. One of two on the day. Let's see what he has to offer here against the new pitcher, Cody Wolf. Breaking ball goes down for strike number one. Very good pitch right there. Had some good movement going inside towards Harden. Oh, pickoff attempt. Very, very Ooh, close. That was a close one there. Bork had uh, not been fully paying attention and had a late start going back to first, but first base umpire Chris Simmons will call it safe. Wolf, another breaking ball, but that one will go for his first ball for this at bat. 1-1 one, one count with one on. Make me state looking to get something going right now. It's been a stagnant game since the fourth inning. Last two innings, we haven't seen anything from either teams. Both teams, though, with nine hits. Another pickoff attempt, but Bork was ready for it that time. Gets back. I think he learned his lesson from last time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got to. You never want to get caught lacking out there. <laughs> Wolf again. Let's uh, try to pick off Bork. After that first attempt, he, he probably thinks he can get him. Mm -hmm. Came so close. Harden awaiting the 2 1 pitch. That one will be outside. 3 1. Harden staying patient in the box. Wolf gives the catcher the nod. Delivers. Outside for ball number four. Harden will walk for the second straight time. Runners on first and second now with Shane Selman, the senior center fielder, coming up to bat for the Cowboys. Selman batting 318 on the year. One of three today, though. Look, try to get something going here for the Cowboys. Home plate umpire calls time. Another ball in left field. Just sitting over there, probably from the bullpen. Left here, Eric Bonnert going to jog back to his position. Wolf getting ready to deliver a pitch here to Selman. That pitch will be grounded over to third. Make the throw to second. He'll be out there. Too late for the double play, but does get the runner at second. Put up two outs here for the Bearcats. Runner on third now for McNeese. With number 34, Clayton Raspberry. Cowboys designated hitter. O of two today. Two 
two runners on, first and third. Two outs. Junior Cody Wolf on the mound for the Bearcats. He's gotten two outs so far this inning, looking to get one more. Strike number one. See if he can get another out before the Cowboys make it to home plate here. Breaking ball a little too far outside for ball number one. Wolf pushing the pace here, not really getting off the mound and walking around. Lined up, ready to go. Nods Johnson. Gives him that breaking ball, dips down inside. There's some good movement right there. Absolutely fooled Raspberry. Let off wasn't even paying attention to that ball as it dropped straight down for his second strike. 1-2 count now. See the second baseman hopping around over there. Cody Wolf's pitch will be not on target there. 2-2 two -two count now with two outs and two runners on. First and third for the McNeese State Cowboys. Raspberry will pop that one up. Second baseman will come over, make the easy out. No harm, no foul by Cody Wolf, who stepped in. Didn't give up any runs. Left runners on first and third for McNeese State. You listen to the 90.5, the cat will be back here in 60 seconds. Welcome back to Don Sanders Stadium. We now have the Cowboys back on the defensive side. And the pitcher for the Cowboys is going to be Will Dion. Coming to bat, number 17, Colton Kowser, the third baseman. Tied 2-2 here at the bottom of the seventh. Dion's pitch below for ball number one. This is game number two in a three-game series. McNeese last night took home the 3-4 to four victory over Sam Houston here at Don Sanders Stadium. Strike number one called for Kowser. The two will also play tomorrow here in Huntsville at Don Sanders Stadium at 1 p.m. Swing and a miss there, 1-2. Be sure to come out here tomorrow night and support your Bearcats. And watch them try to take the sole first possession in the Southland Conference. Dion's 1-2 pitch coming in. That'll be lined over into center. Kowser will round first, elect not to go to second. Single, right there for Kowser. That was a nice hit. That's a good start. Hit it right up the gap between the shortstop and the second baseman. Hunter Hearn stepping up with a runner on first. No outs here in the bottom of the seventh. Cats now have double-digit hits with 10 on the day. 
You know, his pitch will go back to the backstop, and Hearn will jog over to second. It's the little things like that that always, you know, come back to hurt you later on in the games. Yes, and we've been seeing quite a few on the Cowboys' side. Not many mistakes by the Bearcats. Yeah, you would like to, if you're McNeese State, you would like to see them kind of clean those little things up right there. You know, giving up one extra base here and there, you know, adds up. Mm -hmm. Puts runners in scoring position. But good base running. Good, good job paying attention for the Bearcats. And Hearn will line that one over to right. Runner at third will stay. Puts runners on first and third for the Bearcats. Hearn with the single. This will bring up number 44, designated hitter, left-handed sophomore Jack Rogers. 11 hits on the day for the Bearcats now. No outs. Runner on third and another runner on first. Rogers is going to look to take advantage of this. One of three on the day. He'll pop that one over to second. He'll just toss it over to the first baseman. One runner will score for the Bearcats, extending their lead to three to two. Runner will advance to second. Sacrifice RBI right there from Rogers. Good, good team play right there. Bearcats finally get some runs up. Haven't put anything on the board since the third inning. Jordan Cannon from Centerville stepping up. For the Bearcats now, one out, one runner on second. Cannon looking to get his first hit of the day, 0-3. That pitch will be really close inside and almost hit him for ball number one. Dion's pitch. Called ball. 2 0 count now. See the runner at second base trying to get a head start. Dion will stare him down. Deliver the pitch still. That ball will be lined out into right field for a foul. That'll give Cannon his first strike for this at bat. Freshman Will Dion on the mound for McNeese State. Going against the senior cannon, and that's another foul. 2-2 two -two count now. Dion has clawed his way back in. Still only one out here with a runner on second. Cannon looking to get his 14th RBI right here. 13 already on the season. Dion will peek back a second and deliver the pitch. Line down the first baseline. Runner coming around third will easily score. Cannon with a stand up double. Another run here in the bottom of the seventh for the Bearcats. Extends Sam Houston's lead. Four to two now. That was a good play there by the Bearcats. Dion looking a little flusher, taking off his glove, trying to get his mojo back as he's given up two runs here with only one out in the bottom of the seventh. Looks like Nice will come up and congregate here in the middle. Figure out if they're going to bring in a new pitcher or not. Yeah, the coach doesn't look too, too pleased. Doesn't look who please either can't tell who, but there is some action going on in McNeese's bullpen. Possible pitching change coming here after giving up two quick runs here early on in the bottom of the seventh. Catcher Galvin Johnson will be up to bat for the Bearcats whenever McNeese State's resets, which they jogging back out to their respective positions. Manager from Nice walking back. 
does not look pleased at all. Rightfully so. Let's see what this freshman Will Dion can do. Giving up two quick runs here. Let's see what he's made of now. Gavin Johnson up to bat. Batting from the left side against the lefty Dion. First pitch called strike. Johnson has a runner in scoring position on second. We'll look to capitalize off the hot bat so far for Sam Houston. Pitch will be a little too far inside at the knees for Johnson. Ball number one. Dion looking to gather himself back together here. Johnson with his hands above his head. Need better stance. And he'll line that one over into center field. Center field will step up and make the easy catch on the Sam Houston logo. Runner will remain at second. Two outs now for the Bearcats. I know Will Dion and McNeese State dugout happy to see that they got an out right there. Number five, Eric Bonnert. Starting left fielder today. Sophomore from Cypress Ranch High School. One to three today. Dion's pitch will be by the dirt for ball number one. Dion peeking back to second. Ball number two right there. Dion lining up all the way on the left side, his left side of the rubber on the mound. Possibly going to play some pitches outside here. Try to get the right hand and batter leaning and swinging. He'll put that one right down the middle for strike number one. Two one count now for Dion. Two outs. Runner on second for the Bearcats. Bonner one. Wind his bat up a couple times. Dion really staring down the runner at second there. Foul ball. Slightly late on that one. Brings things to a 2 2 count here. Bearcats already knocked in two runs this inning so far. Dion seems to be a little worried about the runner at second as he's been staring him down multiple times for a long time. Still looking at him. Bonner will call time. I'm sure, I'm sure Will Dion is not mad at that at all. Gives him an extra second to regather himself. For the big 2-2 pitch coming up right here. That one will be popped up. First baseman running off into foul territory and makes the catch. That will retire the side. Bearcats knock in two runs. You listen to 90.5 and we'll catch y'all at the top of the eighth. Welcome back to Don Sanders Stadium. 
at the beginning of the eighth inning, we have Cody Wolf pitching for the Sam Houston Bearcats. And the Bearcats is now up four to two. Coming to bat is number 11, Carson Maxwell, the third baseman. We'll see what the senior Maxwell has to offer here, facing off against Wolf for the first time this game. Maxwell's already one of three on the evening. Righty versus righty here. Check swing. Or look down to first. First base umpire says it is a no-go. Ball number one. Wolf with the, the glove up in his face. Doesn't want the batter to see what he's looking at. Breaking ball down right there for strike number one. Maxwell will watch that breaking ball go for strike number two. Wolf with a couple good back-to-back -back breaking balls, giving him something different to look at. One-two count here. And he'll knock that one off to center field for an easy single. Looked like Wolf again went with a breaking ball right there, but Maxwell said... Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Fool me three times, not today. Dickerson coming up to bat for the Cowboys. He's got a runner on first with no outs. Fastball outside for a strike. Also sitting at 15 RBIs for the season. See if he can get something positive going for the Cowboys. Second strike. Wolf looking in. Trying to figure out what pitch he's going to go with here. Sets up the pitch here. Holds it. Late call. Crowd was not feeling that. They thought that one was for sure strike number three, but instead it'll be one ball, two strikes here. Cody Wolf looking down at Johnson. Gives a little nod to his catcher. Another ball right on the outside. 2-2 two -two count now. Gavin Johnson really holding that, that glove out, try to get give the ump a little, little, little false, false eye right there. Mm -hmm. a big swing and a miss there on the breaking ball. For a strikeout, be strike number or out number one on the inning. This will bring up Nate Fisbeck. Wolf notches his first strikeout on today's game. Fisbeck pretty hot at the plate so far. Two of three on the day. Breaking ball for strike number one right there. Wolf's been doing a pretty good job so far at the mount. So far one and one third inning for him. Oh, and beams Fisbeck, and Fisbeck took one right to the back, right by his last name. He'll slowly walk over to first. I'm sure that one was a stinger right there. Yeah. That one got a little too far away from Wolf. Coaches go up there and uh, check with him, make sure that Fisbeck is doing all right. Runners on first and second now for the Cowboys. Wolf has to be careful here. He doesn't want to get all bases filled. 
That'll bring up Brent Welton up to bat, right-handed catcher. Junior walking up to batter's box. Fisbeck seems to be okay at first. Trainers and coaches walked away. Ready to play some some ball here. Wolf's pitch. Too low for ball number one. Well, one has yet to reach base in today's game. 0 of 3. Good time for him to get on base with two runners on right now and only one out. Now one will be popped up into center. Center fielder will make the catch. Didn't have to move too much right there. The ball came right to him. Senior Clay and Harp played the win on that one very well. Easy play for the, the seasoned veteran. Coming up the bat now for McNeese will be first baseman Jacob Strassner. Two outs here. Wolf's pitch will be fouled. Strassner lined that one. A little too late on it, though. No balls and one strike here. Pitch will be popped up. Second baseman will run over there. Get the out. That will retire the side for the Bearcats. McNeese again leaves runners on. It's been a reoccurring theme for both teams today. Cats four, McNeese two. We'll be back here in 60 seconds on 90.5. Welcome back to Don Sanders Stadium, and we're at the bottom of the eighth inning, and it seems like we have a substitution substitution at pitcher here for the Cowboys. Coming in at pitcher, Peyton McLemore is going to be ending things off in the eighth inning. Yeah, it looks like Manise State, after uh, the freshman, Will Dion, came in, pitched two innings. Gave up two runs, though, last inning in the bottom of the seventh. They'll elect to go with the senior, Peyton McLemore. Now try to get more experienced guy out there to try to not let up any more base hits or runs to see if McNeese State can try to find their way back into this game. McLemore will face off against Jackson Lofton in his first appearance on the game. Lofton 0 of 2 already today. McLemore's first pitch will be strike right down the middle. Lofton struggling this season batting 143. Again 0 of 2 on the day. Pretty sure for his morale he needs to get something going. Lofton been busy at shortstop today. Turning out three double plays for the Bearcats. Lofton will pop that one 
foul. 1-2 count here. Payne McLemore on the mound for the Cowboys. That one will be chopped over to third. Third baseman's throw will be a little far outside, but the umpire will still call it an out. First baseman for McNeese. Strassner had to stretch out far for that one. Kept that right foot on the bag, though. Lofton will jog back to the dugout. We'll head back to the top of the lineup with Clayton Hart, center fielder. Batting 301 on the season. One of four today. Harp will take his first pitch for a strike number one. Has to be a good feeling for the Cowboys to get an early out here. Harp will line that one over to first baseman who calls off the pitcher. Strasnor will just jog over and make the easy out. Two quick outs for McNeese. Cowboys dugout has to be happy with the pitching change so far coming in getting two outs. But still have to get one more as Riley McKnight will step up for the Sam Houston State Bearcats. Two of four on the day. McKnight chops that one foul. I was afraid that one might be out there. onto their third pitcher here. And he'll chop that one over to third. One, two, three, send him down inning for the senior Peyton McLemore who came in. Score still remains two to four. We'll head to the top of the ninth here at Don Sanders Stadium on 90.5 the Cat. Welcome back to the home of the Bearcats at Don Sanders Stadium. Pitching for your Bearcats is going to be Cody Wolf. Looking to strike out number one, Reed Bork, the sophomore. Wolf has come in here from the bullpen, pitched a couple solid innings, looking to finish things off here for the Bearcats. Here we are in the top of the ninth inning where the Cats lead against the Cowboys. Two to four. Bork will watch that pitch go too far inside for ball number one. Wolf's 1-0 pitch. Not quite in the strike zone. Ball number two right there. Bork staying patient so far in the batter's box. And he'll swing and rip that one down the right field. That one will bounce off the wall. And he'll be running and hauling as his helmet will fall off. <laughs> Pulling up to second. He'll clap. Try to get a little rally going on right here. Great start for McNeese as Bork gets on to second base. That'll bring up McNeese's prized possession, their freshman, Peyton Harden. 
Harden has walked in his last two at bats. Smaller guy, so you know, smaller strike zone. The cats will uh, look to have a little meeting at the mound. Hopefully, they could come up with something to slow down McNeese. Just a little bit of action going on in Sam Houston's bullpen. There's a righty and a lefty. Can't tell who. Already warming up in the bullpen, just in case. Comes down to it, but they elect not to change, and they'll keep Cody Wolf in. They're going to see what the junior has in him, trying to let him finish out this game with a runner on second and no outs. Bork lined his pitch to right, bounced off the wall, and had a stand-up double. Now Harden at the plate, Bork on second. Wolf will step off the mound, gather his, gather himself real quick, get his head together. First pitch, go for a strike to Harden. No shift from the Bearcats with the lefty at the plate. Everybody will hold true to their normal spots. Runner goes. Ball absolutely just lined straight to Cody Wolf. And that one probably is a stinger right there. Yes. Took one to the gut. He didn't see that one coming, really. No, that one came straight off the bat and just went straight to Wolf. Looked like he might have made the catch at first, but at the same time, when you got a ball coming, screaming at your face, you're not really worried about necessarily catching it, more of defending yourself yeah. right there. <laughs> Looks like the Bearcats will probably make a pitching change here as they're going to congregate at the mound again. And they will come out here with a pitching change. New pitcher going to jog out to the mound. They'll sit Wolf down and came in. Pitched a couple solid innings for the Bearcats. But with Runners going to be on first and third. They elect to go with the new pitcher. As Cole Wasinski comes up to pitch for the Bearcats, we will take a short 30-second break. We'll be back here live from Don Sanders Stadium. back here at Don Sanders Stadium at the beginning of the ninth inning and we have a substitution at pitcher it's going to be Cole Wesneski pitching here the sophomore for the Bearcats sophomore coming out of Cypress Texas Houston suburb Try to see if he can get the Cats out of the situation that McNeese has used their bats to get themselves back into this game, or at least try to. They're still down 2-4, to four, but with no outs with their second batter in their lineup, Shane Selman, up to bat. The senior will look to try to knock in a run. We got one on third, and they have one on first. Good position for McNeese. Heading into the top of the ninth, facing off against a new pitcher in Cole Wesneski. Harden goes. Display of that speed over there. That'll be his eighth stolen base on the season, leading the McNeese Cowboys in that category. 
Sam Houston finding themselves in a deficit right here this inning with runners on second and third. One at the plate with no outs. 1-0 count. Chris Nessie's pitch will be fouled back to the dugout. One of the coaches from Sam try to try to make the throw, try to display his old arm. <laughs> Show everybody he still got it, but the throw back to Wisniewski a little off. Selman one of four on the day, looking to get his second hit here. It'll be very clutch for them to drive in some runs. He'll pop that one up. Shortstop will come up and make the throw. He's called safe. A runner scores for McNeese. Three to four now. Runner on third. Raspberry will be coming up to bat for the McNeese State Cowboys. Looks like the Cowboys have gotten themselves back into this game. Absolutely. Runners on first and third. They got the speedy Harden on there. So you're thinking if they could possibly get a pop out to the outfield. Harden on third. That's a good look for the Cowboys. Possible tag situation right there. Johnson will come up signaling to Wisniewski. No outs here. Bearcats desperately need an out. Got to be careful with anything that goes into play with the possibility of the tying run scoring, which would be Harden sitting on third. Wisniewski will try to check over to first base. Keep the runner honest over there. Wisniewski's pitch over to first. Out at second made. Out at first made. Runner will score. Evening things up at four. Double play there by the Bearcats. will be the fourth on the evening for them. But they give up the run. Evens things at four. Maxwell stepping up for McNeese State. No runners on and two outs. This Nessie's pitch will be inside for a ball. So what do you think about the, the clutch play by uh, the Cowboys here in this inning? Ninth inning, the last possible chance they could have done it anything. It was very impressive. I, I thought they was out of, the, out of the game already, but they got their men on base and came up with two huge scores to tie the game up. Yeah, it also helps whenever your uh, top of your lineup is getting going. And stepping up to bat in very clutch situations. Yes, and that um, stolen base by Peyton Harden really made a difference. Yes, that'll be a called strike right there. 1 2 count now. It's like, again, uh, throughout the day we've been talking about like stolen bases or, you know, balls that are getting to the backstop and allowing runners to advance. All that stuff comes up. Later on in the game, here we are. Tied 4 4 is that ball will be. Hit over into center field, and the center fielder cannot get it. It'll bounce off the wall. Maxwell will stay up at second base. Two outs here with Dickerson coming up to bat. Runner on second. McNeese looking for another run here. Coach will come out for Sam Houston to come talk to the infield. More or less the pitcher. It looks like we're actually going to have... Another pitching change. Somebody coming out of the bullpen. He's looking like Brad Demko. Demko. Brad Demko. He's going to come up here and pitch for the Bearcats. We'll be back here in 60 seconds on 90.5.
Welcome back to Don Sanders Stadium, where the Bearcats and the McNeese Cowboys are tied here 4-4. Four four. We have a substitution for the Bearcats at pitcher is going to be Brad Demko, the left-handed pitcher, warming up here. Brad Demko, the junior, really trying to see what he's made of right here. Tied 4-4 with the runner on second. With two outs here, he only needs one. Give a chance for the Bearcats to get their bats going. Try to see if they can nab this win out. If not, we will more than likely see extra innings. Demko working from the stretch. Put that one down for a ball. Dickerson didn't bite on that one a bit. No, he was not falling for that at all. Hence why he has a, a 349 batting average on the season. 2 of 4 on the day. He'll pop that one foul. Be one ball, one strike. Sam Houston really looking to get that last out here, get him out of this inning where they've given up two runs. Allowing the Cowboys to remain in this game. Tied at four. Demko's 1-1 one, one pitch. Runner going. Third baseman wasn't over there in time. Catcher elected not to throw it. Good decision. Another stolen base for the Cowboys. The runner on third now for McNeese. Dickerson who's had a good bat so far all season. No exception today. Two of four. Looking to make something happen here. Demko's pitch. That will be popped way up in the in infield. Second baseman will make the catch. Get the third out. Sam Houston will come up to bat. It is tied 4-4. We're going into the bottom of the ninth. We'll be back here in 60 seconds at Don Sanders Stadium on Welcome back to the home of the Bearcats here at Don Sanders Stadium. Coming to you at the bottom of the ninth inning. Pitching for the McNeese Cowboys is going to be Peyton McLemore. And coming out to bat is number 17, Colton Kowser, the freshman. Cows are up to bat here now. Facing off against the senior Macklemore. Macklemore came in last inning to relief Will Dion. Macklemore got three quick outs. We'll look to do the same here again. Swing and a miss there from Cowser. Cowser with a solid bat. Today, 2 of 4, 408 on the season. That ball will be just a little too far outside, 2 1 count. Cows are looking to be clutch here and get a base hit. 
That'll be inside by the kneecaps for ball number three. One more and he walks him. Morris pitch. He fouled by Kowser. It's been quite a very interesting and so, somewhat even game for the most part. We are tied 4-4. Both teams really getting on base with no problem. McNeese with 14 hits and the Bearcats with 12. That pitch will be chopped out and fouled. The real big story here is, though, at the top of the ninth, McNeese scores two runs to tie it. Went on a nice little rally right there to get themselves back into this game. Looking like we're going to have a repeat of last night, where McNeese barely edged out Sam Houston by one run, winning 3-4. to four. Full count pitch right here. It'll be off the pitcher's glove. Second baseman is not in position to get it. Kowser thought about going second, went around the corner hot, decided to stay on. Base hit for Kowser. Be his third hit of the game. That'll bring up Hunter Hearn, the senior, first baseman. McNeese will call time here as they'll meet up at the mound. There is action going on in McNeese State's bullpen. Whether they will elect to bring somebody out or not, the answer will be yes. With a substitution coming out, we'll be back here at Don Sanders Stadium in 60 seconds. Welcome back at the bottom of the ninth inning here at Don Sanders Stadium. We're gonna, we're ha we have a substitution for the McNeese Cowboys at pitcher. It's going to be number 26, Aiden Anderson, coming in. The senior. McNeese looking to go for a little more veteran players right now. Two back-to-back -back senior pitchers. Try to get them out of this game. McNeese looking to, again, hold the Bearcats here. No runs so they can see if they can get something going in extra innings. But the Bearcats, rightfully so, and for obvious reasons, don't want that to happen. They got a runner on first with no outs. Looking at a new pitcher here, as Tony just mentioned. Bearcats are probably look, looking to end this one here and get someone in to the home plate. And no better batter today than Hunter Hearn. Four of four on the day. Looks to remain perfect here. Anderson's first pitch will be chopped over to third. Runner steals over to second. Out at first. Runner advances into scoring position, though. Good news for the Bearcats. Also good news for McNeese is that they do get one out there, bringing them two outs closer to extending this game. Jack Rogers, number 44, will step up to bat here with one on second with only one out. The odds are in their favor here. Pump will call time. Intentional walk. They made the decision to intentionally walk the designated hitter, Rogers. That'll put runners on first and second. 
hmm. for the Bearcats. That'll bring up right fielder Jordan Cannon, who has the highest batting average on the team. So it makes you kind of wonder why they would intentionally walk a guy to bring up arguably the best batter in the lineup for the Bearcats. Actually, it's going to be Oh, Jackson. no, they have a pinch hitter. Yep. Yeah. Jackson Grimshaw. Jack Grimshaw, the senior. Will actually step up right now. Lefty versus righty here. First pitch will go for a ball. Anderson peaks back to second. Delivers the pitch. Right down the middle for a strike. Bearcats really have a prime opportunity to knock one run in here, and that's all they do need as we are tied at the bottom of the ninth. Four to four with one out. Runners on first and second. That pitch will be at the feet of Grisham, who is pinch hitting right here. He's seeing his first looks of the game here. Worst case scenario for the Bearcats here is a double play. Definitely not looking forward to that. Pitch. Drop down for a strike. Number two. 2-2 two -two count here now. Grisham going to look to make something happen here. Steps back up into the batter's box. Anderson one strike away from sitting him down. Wynn really picking up here now. That one will be popped up, and will it drop? It will drop. That'll put bases loaded for the Bearcats with one out. Harden wasn't entirely sure if he could make it up to it, but he did not. So now this is everything you dream about as a kid. Number 43, Gavin Johnson up to bat. Doesn't get any better than this, folks. Bases are loaded, bottom of the ninth, and we have a tie game. Let's see what we have going on here. Gavin Johnson from San Antonio, starting catcher for today. Very sticky situation for the pitcher here for the Cowboys. First pitch, we fouled. Johnson 0 of 4, but will be rightfully forgiven if he can get a base hit right here. Anderson setting up on his right side of the rubber on the mound. Pitch. Check swing. Still goes down for a strike. Number two. 0-2 -two count now. Anderson's got him right where he wants him. Anderson nods his catcher. 0-2 pitch. Be fouled. Johnson was swinging for the fences on that one. Don't necessarily need a grand slam, although that would be very entertaining. Just need one simple base hit or the ball just get into the outfield for the Bearcats. Johnson waits the pitch. Swings. Chopped right over to second as they'll make the first out and the second out. Double play right there for McNeese as they keep themselves in the game and Anderson with bases loaded forces the double play and we'll be back at the top of the 10th for some extra innings here at Don Sanders Stadium on 90.5 in 60 seconds.
welcome back to Don Sanders Stadium. We're going into some extra innings here at the top of the 10th inning. A substitution at pitcher for your Bearcats is going to be Nick Mikolacic. The junior for the Bearcats. Another pitching change here for the Bearcats. Mikolacic coming in, going to try to hold it down for the Bearcats as we're going to be getting ready to get going in the top of the 10th here. Last inning, Bearcats had bases loaded and knocked the ball to the shortstop for the 6-4-3 double play. McNeese got themselves out of a very, very bad situation right there. But had some good pitching from the senior who came in, Aiden Anderson. It looked like a for sure win there with all bases filled for the Bearcats. Yeah, especially sent with only one out. You I mean, e even if it was something as simple as a, a pop out to the outfield, you know, you get a tag and a run in if he can beat the throw. But here we are with Fisbeck coming up to bat for the Cowboys. Fisbeck batting two of three on the day. Mikulacic will put his first pitch in. It'll be a big swing and a miss there by Fisbeck. Fourteen hits for both teams today. Another swing and a miss by Fisbeck. Mikulacic putting some, some heat on him. Not ready for it yet. Both teams have been very active at the plate today. Like I just said, both teams with 14 hits. And McNeese with the clutch ninth inning. That ball will go high for ball number one. McNeese State at the top of the ninth knocked in two runs and played some solid defense to get themselves clawing back into this game. And here we are at the top of the tenth. I'll be fouled. He reached for that one. Count still remains at 1-2. With the junior Nick Mikulacic on the mound for the Bearcats. See if he can strike, strike him out here. And he does. Swing and a miss there from Fisbeck. Mikulacic gets the first out of the inning. And that'll bring up number 13, Welton for the McNeese State Cowboys. Mikulaj's first pitch will be called ball. to 2-0 now. Well, one has yet to get on base today. 0 of 4. And he'll watch a curveball go in for strike number one. Nikolaj's 2-1 pitch. Another breaking ball going in for strike number two there. Even count now at two. One out for the Bearcats. Well and up to bat for the Cowboys. 2-2 two -two pitch. Be a swing and a miss there. Mikulacic getting another strikeout. Two quick outs. And that'll bring up first baseman, number 17, Strassner. For McNeese State. Mikulacic is putting a lot of pressure on the batters here. Yeah, he's coming out. Absolutely coming through, putting some heat on there with the fastball. A couple good breaking balls. Fastball to finish him off. His first pitch to Strassner. The fastball for strike number one. Strassner one of four on the day, making his fifth appearance at the plate. He 
watch the pitch will be just a little too far outside. One and one count now. One one pitch coming in. Swing and a miss there. Mikolajic looking for a whole inning that he would just strike them all out. One strike away from that. It looked like he was the Bearcats' secret weapon here. Yep. A ground over to short. First baseman gets the short hop. Be out number three. And we'll go to the bottom of the 10th to see if the Bearcats can close it out here in Huntsville at Sam Houston State University on Don Sanders Stadium. You're listening to 90.5 The Cat. We'll be back here in 60 seconds. Welcome back to Don Sanders Stadium, home of the Bearcats. We're at the bottom of the 10th inning here, and we have Aiden Anderson pitching for the McNeese Cowboys. And coming out to bat is going to be number four for the Bearcats, Darian Sims, the senior. Sims batting 250 on the season. Sims is from Spring, Texas, one of the many on the Bearcats team. He'll take that first pitch for ball number one. See if he can get on base here in his first opportunity on the field. Good eye there. Recognizes that that ball is too low and out of reach for ball number two right there. Anderson has lost lost touch on his last two pitches. Putting them low and in the dirt. 2-0 pitch coming. Finds the strike zone right there. 2-1 count. Sim shows bunt, but the senior elects not to go. Move things to a 3-1 count. Sim's keeping a very good eye so far. More than likely will look to take this pitch unless he absolutely loves it. Shows bunt, and he'll take his base. The senior comes in. Walks. That'll bring up the shortstop, number seven, Jackson Lofton, up to bat with a runner on first. No outs here. Lofton is yet to get on base today. 0-3, shows bunt, makes contact. Sims will be good at second. Sacrifice bunt there from Lofton. It's the second sacrifice he has done today. Good team player. Very good team player. It's like his second or third time showing bunt. Yep, doing what's best for the team to advance Sims to second base. That'll bring up Reese Johnson, a freshman. Left-handed batter coming up. He's from Austin, Texas. Sam electing to bring in some more pinch runners to get some some fresh eyes and fresh legs in there. He'll take that first pitch, and Sims will advance over to third. With one out now, we have a, Sam Houston has a runner on third base with the freshman Johnson up to bat. This could be a great situation here for the Bearcats. 
Yep, anything to the outfield is essentially almost a guaranteed run with the game-winning run Sims on third. And he lines that one out to right center. Sims will tag. Sims run. The throw will come in. And Sims is safe. The Bearcats will win 5-4. to four. Sims coming in with a pinch hitter, takes a walk, steals the second, tags home on third, and that is a ball game here from Don Sanders Stadium at Sam Houston State University in Huntsville, Texas. Ladies and gentlemen, what a great game we witnessed. McNeese tried very, very hard, put up two runs late in the ninth to take it to extra innings. And the freshman, Reese Johnson, with the sacrifice RBI to bring in Sims. I'm Evan Schumard. And I'm Tony Swain. You've been listening to 90.5. See y'all next time.